Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hello and welcome to the next episode, this new episode of Your Forever Home, the podcast. Today we're in episode seven of the Kitchen Design Essential season and it's just been such a fabulous season um, for so many different reasons. I've been getting so many comments on uh, what a great um, what great information uh, we've been able to provide on this season, which is just so lovely to hear. Today I'm going to be talking about cabinetry materials. And this is such a big one um, for so many different reasons, and I'm actually going to cover seven different materials in this episode. What I'm finding is when people often um, come in contact with us that they're really only aware of maybe one or two materials, and so that then becomes the go-to. So rather than really investigating what's going to be the best material for them. It's really what you know is what you're going to seek out. And I suppose this is a um, an example of just in any component of your home. Um, if it's not an area that you're an expert in, what ends up happening is you just go to the go-to product, the one that you know of, the ones your friends have talked about, and that may not necessarily be the best product for you. So anyway, what I'm going to do today is go through seven different materials that you can use for your cabinetry and and basically just run through um, the advantages and disadvantages of them, give you some awareness of them so you can make some informed choices. I think the most common ones that people know of are laminate and two-pack, which of course I'm going to cover off. And there's lots of advantages to so many um, different materials and really it's just working out um, what's best for you. You need to be across what these materials compositions are, what's going to be important for you. Um, So do your research. So really, how do you choose the right cabinetry materials? There's so many factors to consider to make sure that what you choose for your home, your forever home kitchen, is going to um, serve you as you need it to. So some of the key things that I always discuss with my clients are things like durability. You know, most people want to invest and get a product that's going to last The aesthetic, obviously the way it looks is important. There's a particular look you're trying to create for your kitchen, so that's important. The profiles, and the profile means what's the design of the door? Is it flat? Does it have a a shaker style, which is a very simple profile? Does it have, um, you know, quite a detailed profile? The type of profile that you may be seeking can impact the type of material that you can choose from. And what about cleaning requirements? This is always a big one. I know one of the things that clients say to us often is, oh, I don't want it to easily fingerprint. And I see it a lot on the groups as well, um, that people want a product that's going to be easy to clean. So that's definitely a consideration. If you're after a very specific colour, that's also going to impact the type of material that you can have. Um, you know, if you want a green apple kitchen, that might not be available in the in the um, product Um, that you would like and so you may need to uh, go down the route of choosing another cabinetry material type if you've got your heart set on that green apple kitchen and it's funny because you may laugh about the green apple but uh, it definitely was big in the 60s but I've got a really good friend in Scotland and uh, she was actually renovating her kitchen Uh, while she was pregnant and she said I know I shouldn't be doing this now I know that I'm going to be skewed by the fact that I'm pregnant and my hormones are all over the place and I'm probably going to choose all these mad random colors that I'm going to hate um, you know at, at, at the end of all this and she chose green apple And um, all these many years later, um, when she was pregnant, uh, all those many moons ago, over 10 years ago, um, she still actually quite likes her green apple kitchen. So the pregnancy must have done good things for her. Um, But, you know, she was very conscious that she might have been doing some loopy things. And then finally, um, the other thing to think about is your budget. So that will also determine um, what's going to be available for you in terms of the materials um, that, that may be suitable for you in your budget. Okay, so I'm going to start with number one. And number one is two-pack. And this is a very well-known product. It's also known as Emperiche, but it is effectively a car paint. So it's got a super, super hard surface because it's baked. 
and um, it's available in any colour, which is a really big advantage um, because if you are after that green apple kitchen and that might not be available in the laminate or other materials, often you'll need to go down the two pack route just because you can choose from any paint color that's available from any brand. So you've got thousands and thousands of colors to choose from. So if that's something that's uh, really important to you, then two pack may actually be the option you'll need to run with. Um, because that, that super hard surface is, um, is baked, it won't peel, which is a great advantage. Um, it's available in lots of different sheen levels. So your matte, your satin, and also you can get a metallic paint. So that might be, um, you know, great for some people that may want a bit of bling. There's no edging as the actual um, paint wraps around the front of the door and then it wraps seamlessly around the corners. And so um, you've got smooth edging. It's available in just about any door profile. And one of the advantages with that is that you'll also get a really tight uh, cut into the uh, the door profile. So any of the mouldings um, have a really tight edging. So, so that's really nice as well. If you want it really sharp and crisp, that's not necessarily available in other products. And simply because it's painted, it means that they can get those very tight, tight profiles and crisp edging. Uh, one of the downsides I find with Tupac though is that the edges um, can often chip easily, particularly if you're using um, a fingerless pull and you may have a beveled edge which is available in a Tupac. Um, it can chip easily if you knock a saucepan against it. Um, you know, even though the surface on the front is very is hard, the edging can chip really easily. Um, you know, I had a girlfriend who installed a brand new two-pack kitchen. Yep, everyone was using two-pack, so yep, I'll use two-pack too. And uh, within a week, she had chips just because of that, um, you know, putting pans and, and things back into drawers, um, those edges chipped. So I don't generally specify two-pack for family kitchens or where I know there's going to be really hard wear and tear. Clients might actually say to me, look, we're really quite hard on our surfaces and so they need something super durable. I wouldn't specify Tupac in that instance. So again, this is where we are educating our clients around the advantages and disadvantages of certain materials and why we would suggest one particular material for them over another. Um, this is where I have a conversation around Tupac. The next one I'm going to talk about is thermal wrap. This is also known as vinyl wrap um, uh, in the days of yore. And, uh, you know, it, it did have, pardon the pun, I'll, I'll mention that in advance. It did have a bit of a bad rap back in the 80s and 90s um, for peeling, particularly close to heated surfaces um, and, and heat from stoves. So generally what happened in those days is that the side panels were peeling. And so People sort of went off vinyl slash thermal wrap for those reasons. However, the technology has improved significantly over the years. So what we were seeing in the 80s and 90s has definitely improved significantly. So it's, um, it's vacuum sealed really tightly to an MDF or particle board. And I feel that it's just a really, really great durable material. It's definitely my go-to for family kitchens. I've used it in family kitchens, uh, in my own family kitchens for years and years, and I've never, ever had an issue, never had an issue with anyone that we've specified it for either. It's a similar sort of price point to two-pack. It used to be more cost-effective, but now it's sort of pretty much on par with a two-pack finish. And it's also available in a multiple uh, array of door profiles. However, the edging, so for example, in a shaker style, which is a very simple, just um, square inside as the profile of the door, it's not as sharp as what Tupac can provide. And that really is because that vinyl has to wrap around and shrink wrap itself around that profile. So it's just not as sharp. I suppose the advantage of that is because it's not as sharp and it's got, you know, it's on a slight slant, it makes it a little bit easier to clean rather than super, super sharp um, edging like you would have in a super sharp sink, that it's quite difficult to get into those edges. So that could also be viewed um, as a positive. It's available in lots of different colors, but you are obviously limited to the colors provided by the manufacturer. It's not like two-pack where you can choose, um, you know, whatever color is available in a paint color. 
The other thing to think about is that it's not suitable for really high doors because it can actually warp over time. And that's where I would probably, if you've got a very high doors uh, specified in your kitchen, um, it either needs to be designed around, which we do all the time, or you need to then have um, a different type of um, material, uh, just because generally the, the two pack doors at you know 2.6 can, can actually, sorry, the um, vinyl doors can actually be too, just too high um, for, for it to be super durable over time. The other great thing with uh, thermal wrap is as like two pack, it does wrap around the door front. So you also got that smooth, seamless edge, which a lot of people really like to have. Uh, I regularly specify thermal wrap for family kitchens. We've got our go-to brands and they just work so well they're not as susceptible to chipping and so i find that thermal wrap is actually just a little bit more durable in that regard it's really the edges on cabinetry that are going to um, damage much more quickly than the surface and that's why i think uh, thermal wrap is a little bit more forgiving the next one is incredibly popular and that is laminate. Now laminate is available in so many different finishes and there are so many different manufacturers both here in Australia and also overseas. So some of the finishes are natural, a natural finish, a satin finish with a low level of gloss, a matte finish. We've got fingerprint and chemical resistant surface finishes, a wood grain or embossed finishes and gloss. So there are just so many different types of finishes available depending on who the manufacturer is. And this often determines the price point. So laminate can be quite cost effective. Um, it could be, um, you know, depending on the finish that you're choosing, or it can be similar to thermal wrap and two pack and be at the higher end of the scale just because of the finish and also where it's coming from. Not all laminates are equal. Some of the laminates that we use that come out of Europe, uh, we find are superior in terms of clients wanting a timber look finish. Uh, some of the timber looked laminates coming out of Europe are very, very lifelike. And, um, and so I feel that sometimes it's worth spending a little bit more if it's really important for the client that that timber is looking as lifelike as possible. Some of the cheaper laminates available, um, uh, the timbers are not necessarily as lifelike. So that's something just to consider. And, you know, if you're not using a timber, then um, it may not be necessary to go as high end. It doesn't actually wrap around the door front to provide a seamless finish like thermal wrap and two pack does. So there's an edging tape uh, between the door front and the, and the edge of the door and that's called an ABS edging. So it doesn't wrap all the way around. So if a seamless edge is important to you, um, a laminate may not be uh, the finish that you would prefer. Now, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but um, in, you know, when laminate was really big in the 60s as well, sometimes the edging didn't match and you'd have like a piece of, of, of colored plastic that went on the edging um, between the, the door front and the sides. That's now changed and pretty much every laminate is available with a matching ABS edging tape, which means that it's not as noticeable and you've got like one to two mil between the front and the, and the, and the edge where there may be a little bit of plastic exposed, but that's becoming much, much better and um, it, it's not as obvious as what it used to be. Also comes in a wide variety of colors and finishes. The timber look cabinetry is very, very popular. Um, and as I was saying before, there is a very big difference with how lifelike it looks depending on the brand. You can also have profile doors with laminate. It's not as extensive as what it would be with say two pack, um, but again, you can have your profile doors. All right, the next one I'm gonna talk about is timber veneer. Now this is a premium product. It is a very thin slice of real timber that's actually put on a furniture grade MDF. So being a premium material, it's a real piece of timber. It's a much higher, it, it requires a much higher budget. It's definitely for uh, high-end kitchens. Now it's also um, really good from an environmentally um, conscious uh, perspective because you're maximizing that log into tiny, thin, little sheets. So you're basically using all um, of the log into all these thin, thin, thin layers um, that then get attached to the MDF. 
it's not as durable. And I think this is not only from a price point perspective. I mean, it, it's at least double the price of two pack, and sometimes even more, just depending on the timber that you're choosing. Absolutely beautiful, of course. But the other reason a lot of um, clients are not veering down that path is because it's not as durable as some of the other materials that I've mentioned previously uh, in this episode. Um, so because it is a real timber, uh, it can absorb moisture, even though you can actually have a finish uh, placed over the top of it. It needs a little bit of extra care with cleaning and it can actually scratch more easily. So sometimes because of these reasons and particularly uh, not that we're talking about bathrooms, but if you've got, you know, lots of steam and so forth, it's not necessarily going to be a great, um, a great, um, uh, decision to use, uh, in those areas if it is going to be, um, a little bit uh, battered around um, again in a family kitchen um, overhead cupboards it's probably going to be fine um, but but um, under bench cupboards you really need to be mindful just in terms of how much beating it's going to get um, in a family kitchen the next one I wanted to talk about was Decton. Now you will have heard me talk about Decton as one of my most favourite bench top materials around um, when we were talking about bench tops in the bench top part one episode. Um, but it can also be used as cabinetry fronts. Now because Decton uh, by Cosentino is a product that is pretty much used for anything, floors, facades, bench tops, uh, you name it, but it can also be used for cabinetry fronts. And it's pretty much indestructible. So your kids can draw all over it and uh, we call it graffiti proof and that will all come off. It won't mark, it won't stain, it won't scratch. So it is very, very durable. It's also um, a great choice if you're after a very specific aesthetic. So Decton comes in a lot of industrial size finishes. So uh, something that, that looks a little bit more industrial, looks like iron, uh, looks like um, you know a beaten metal. Uh, Decton actually have those sorts of finishes available. So if that's the sort of thing that you'd like as your cabinetry front, Decton could be an option for you. And also the fact that it is pretty much indestructible. It's definitely going to be a high price point to have that as your cabinetry front than say something like laminate or thermal wrap. Um, but again, there are reasons that you may want to use it. The final one I'm going to talk about now is glass. And uh, I often get asked about having glass fronts and I think it's great for being able to see your contents. If you've got some stunning glasses that you wanted to showcase or anything else that you wanted to showcase behind glass, then glass doors are beautiful. They also break up the cabinetry. So rather than having, you know, a block of, um, you know, solid cabinetry, the glass can break that up a little bit. And I know that that's quite appealing for a lot of people. Uh, also not so great. So on one side, it's really nice to showcase the contents behind the glass doors, but also not so great if you really want to be able to hide contents and probably even more hide maybe some of the not so tidy cupboards or the fact that you might need to um, put more in there than you knew intended. So if that's going to be a concern and you're not quite sure uh, what you're going to put in there, then perhaps glass may not be the ideal solution. You're able to use different types of glass types, which then can also create a little bit of interest in your kitchen because you're adding texture and you're adding a different aesthetic. So things like frosted, which I personally I'm not a massive fan of. I think it's a little bit um, sterile, but fluted glass is also something that's quite beautiful. It's an aesthetic in itself. It also disguises a little bit more what's behind um, in, in the cupboard. So it's less visible behind fluted or frosted glass. It can be expensive and another thing you'll need to consider are the, clear, are the cleaning requirements um, required and it may be more susceptible to chipping. But obviously, like I was talking about last week with regards to splashbacks, you know, the cleaning and the streaking may also drive you crazy and that might be a reason that glass is not going to be for you. Now, the final thing I wanted to talk about, because that's where I've covered off the seven different materials, and I certainly hope that now you've got a lot more to research, a lot more Googling to do in terms of what are going to be the finishes that are right for you. And don't forget in every one of these different categories that you've got a wide variety of brands available and they will have um, perhaps different features, they'll have different colors and, and different elements available. But I just wanted to chat to you quickly about kickers. And kickers are the, the piece of material that run from your floor. So basically underneath the cupboard, the underbench cupboards that meet the floor. And these are rebated back 
um, back from the cupboard's front so that you can get your feet under there, you can vacuum under there, and they are generally anywhere between 100 and 150 millimetres high. Um, that's fairly standard. Now, there's lots of different things that you can do with your kickers. They can be um, part of the aesthetic and create a different type of feel to your kitchen. So you could actually use the same cabinetry material on your cabinet fronts for your kicker. So for example, if you were using thermal wrap uh, on your cabinetry fronts in your underbench cabinetry, you could then run that also along as a kicker. Or you could choose a different color, which can create a completely different aesthetic. You can create a contrast with the kicker and the cabinetry front. Um, I really like using stone, particularly if there's leftover stone from bench tops or whatever the bench top's going to be. Again, that's going to depend on what the color is of your bench tops and whether that's all going to work. But stone is obviously super durable. Um, but some people get a little bit worried about you know, products like thermal wrap being okay for kickers, um, they wipe down really easily. So from that perspective, they're great. Um, and yeah, some, some of the scuffs may not come out. You've got to be pretty serious on the scuffing. Um, I found them to be really, really durable in my own kitchens, but stone, I suppose, is just that step up. Some people are using things like stainless steel. That creates a very different aesthetic um, as well, and that's obviously very, very durable uh, and would also then be more expensive. So there's lots of different things that you can do with your kickers, but don't forget about those when you're specifying uh, because they also need to be considered. There's lots of different things that you can do with your kickers. All right, so that is my episode on cabinetry materials. I just wanted to remind you, uh, we have been working on so many kitchens over the last uh, couple of months. And what it's prompted me to consider is um, that we need a little bit more information on our website. So coming soon, there is going to be more information on the packages that we provide for kitchens. We can do materials only if you're really stuck on what goes with what or what material is going to suit your particular um, requirements. We can do materials only. We can do the kitchen design only. And I am going to have a whole different episode in the podcast on joinery design and kitchen design because it is so important. The amount of times I have seen people designing their kitchen off a floor plan and expecting the builder to know what they want is just... Uh, it just blows me away. It is just not possible to get what you want relying off a floor plan. So we can just do the design, which is really critical. And the way we go about the design is quite different to how um, it can be done elsewhere. Or we can do both. And so we're just finding with clients asking us to do more and more different things um, and tailoring things to them that I'm now creating standard packages for materials only, designing and doing the joinery only, or we can actually do both. Um, the other thing that we're getting asked more to do is a kitchen um, plan sanity check. So most of you who follow me would know that we do a floor plan sanity check, which is an incredibly popular product, basically assessing all of your floor plans. And now we're getting asked more and more, can you please have a look at my kitchen? Can you please let me know that it's okay? Um, and so I am going to create a standalone kitchen sanity checked product that is going, or service I should say, that's going to be coming soon and available on the website, book it on the website. And, um, and that just enables you to have a second set of expert eyes go over your kitchen to make sure that it's, it's going to serve you as best as it can. Now that's obviously going to be a little bit limited in terms of, well, we can certainly provide a lot of guidance, but where it's, it's, it's really reviewing the floor plans, um, designing the kitchen for you is a separate service. So don't forget, you can book a chat with me. If you are a bit stuck on something, particularly now is an awesome time to um, really get moving. We are doing so much joinery design and so many uh, other things that we're able to do remotely to keep projects ticking over, particularly for Victorians that are in stage four lockdown, so that when we actually open up again, um, you're ready to rock and roll. So there is just still so much that you are able to do. And I think clients have been quite surprised in what we are um, able to achieve for them in this lockdown period, because the whole team is working from home and we've got the resources to work from home to do that. 
So if you are a bit stuck, don't forget to book a chat. I'll leave that link in the show notes. Um, It's also available on the homepage of the website um, that you can get access to my diary and book in 15 minutes with me to go through um, what may be a a sticking point for you and I can help you out there. So um, next week, I'm going to be talking about joinery design. So joinery design is uh, one element of internal elevations and I just want to run through why it's so important and what the insight you can gain from getting your kitchen designed uh, properly using internal elevations and the sorts of things that can be missed if you don't do that and the sorts of headaches that you can avoid um, by getting your kitchen designed and basically going through all the different elements um, at, at, a, um, at, at a paper stage rather than an on-site stage. Uh, it's quite insightful in terms of the difference it can make to the outcome, to mitigating mistakes, and to really, I think, more, most importantly, getting what you want. And so I'm going to be talking about that in depth next week. So don't miss that, miss that episode, Internal Elevations and Kitchen Joinery Design. Um, that that's going to be a, a great one. Um, I, th- I think it's the one that we're getting asked so much about because there's a really, I've, I've sensed that just understanding what do you get with an internal elevation? What do you get with, with joinery? What does it mean? Uh, why can't I do that myself? Um, just, just how um, impactful it can be to getting what you want and mitigating mistakes. So anyway, I'm sure now you'll be um, busying yourself with doing um, lots of research on the cabinetry materials that may actually suit you. I trust as this, this has provided you with some really good insight. Don't forget to leave a review. I'm getting so much feedback from people about how um, how much knowledge they're getting um, from this podcast, which is just music to my ears and, um, you know, has a big um, love heart in my heart when, when people say that to me. But if you can leave a review, that just helps other people find this podcast because we're still relatively new. We only launched in April. So I would so appreciate if you could leave a review um, so that other people can find us too. Have a great week. I'll be here um, next week, next Wednesday for the joinery design of your kitchen. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help to create a beautiful and functional forever home, you can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.